Okay, so this is the review for summative number 10 in the fall of 2019 for Algebra 2. Um, we have a new section showing up. This is circles, but we're revisiting it with the completing the square components. So you are going to get a new score in a new section here. But first, a little bit of review from circles and what formula we need to use. So remember your formula for circles looks a little like this. Oops. Switch colors the whole time. All right, so x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared, and it equals the radius squared. So if I give you the center and the radius, you should be able to fill that in um, as far as the formula of the circle goes. So it starts off with the skeleton. Here we go. All right, x minus h would be x minus 12. That's this guy. Built in negative, of course. Um, and then your k value is a negative 5, so that turns into a y plus 5 for that quantity. And then your radius being a 6, it's going to be 6 to the second power over here. So we would like you guys to come through and change 6 to the second power and call it a 36. All right, there we go. So that's a little review. Um, so is this part. If I give you the formula, can you tell me where the center and radius are located? So the um, center of the circle colors right this time. Remember this is a built, oh geez, wrong color, <laughs> built-in negative, so 7, comma, and again another built-in negative on the y component, so 9, and then this one always messes with kids because they're like, what? So the radius is the square root of that number back there, 62, which um, I don't think that simplifies because 31 times 2, no. So that's a great answer right there, the square root of 62. If for some reason you typed that in your calculator and gave me a decimal equivalent, I would accept that. All right, so these next few questions, they are in what's called general conic form, and that doesn't help us out at all. So we're going to do completing the square. We're going to do it twice. So we start off with x squared plus 6x, and then we're going to complete the square. And then we're going to do something similar with the y's. So we have plus y squared. Um, plus 28y, and then we're going to complete the square on that one. And then after the equal sign, you're going to see all your constants. So this 196 basically is in the way, so we need to move it over by subtracting 196. And I'm sure you notice that this problem is very lengthy. It takes up like the whole, whole slide. Um, we got to balance everything out here, though, right? We have a plus blue and a plus green blank. All right, let's go fill in what these blanks are. So the formula that you're supposed to use for the blanks is that you take whatever your middle number is, you cut it in half, and then you square it. So for us, uh, 6 cut in half squared would be a 9. And then, oh boy, 28 cut in half would be 14 squared is 196. So just to recap, you took this middle number here, which was black ink, this middle number here and this middle number here, you cut them in half, squared them, and that's how you got the blanks. All right, so now, okay, first of all, apologies that I sound weird. I just started having a huge bloody nose, <laughs> so I, I'm plugged up right now. Okay, anywho, back to the lesson. Um, so this trinomial right here, the reason we put the 9 there is because now we should be able to factor it uh, into x and then plus 3 quantity squared. We just steal the same sign as the trinomial, so plus 6 cuts in half to plus 3. And then for the y's, we have this, oops, sorry, this trinomial, which factors into y plus 14 quantity squared, same formula. And then here we're supposed to add these up, well, the negative 196 and 196 cancel, so this just adds up to a 9. So now I should be able to tell you where the center and uh, where the center is located, which is at negative 3, negative 14. And then the radius is the square root of 9, which is better known as 3. So, got to use the technique of completing the square twice on those questions, so that's kind of fun. Uh, and then here, I feel like I skipped some questions. Let me back up a little bit. Uh, I think we're There we go, quadratic formula. Okay, so um, number nine, I want you to solve with the quadratic formula, which will be given to you on the test. So the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root 
of b squared minus 4ac, and then all of it over 2a. And then the way you simplify it and how you partially go to the calculator is kind of the key to this question. The plugging into the formula is not difficult. All right, so let's take a look at our coefficients. So sorry for the confusion that the variables they use here are b's, but as far as quadratic formula goes, it's all about the coefficients. So this a value in front of the b squared term is a 1, and then the quadratic, or sorry, the linear coefficient right here is a positive 8, and then the constant is a negative 20. All right. I'm hoping my bloody nose stops pretty soon. Okay, <laughs> equals. So the formula starts off with the opposite of b. So we're going to start off with the opposite of 8. So negative 8, and then plus and minus square root of. This is where, even though you know that 8 squared is 64, just for habit, we'd love for you guys to write this as 8 squared with the 8 in parentheses and the squared outside of it. Minus 4 times get my colors straight here. 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 20. And then all divided by 2 times a, so 2 times 1. All right, so here goes the partial simplification. What you have to do next is simply type in what's called the discriminant. So not the square root, just the numbers that are underneath the square root. So the quadratic formula still starts with negative 8 plus and minus the square root of, and then if we type this, probably I have the calculator next to me, <laughs> this is 64 plus 80, right? A little side note here. So that's 144. Oh, that's a, uh, it's kind of bad news, isn't it? Because when we look at the square root of 144, this reduces. The good news is it reduces really nicely. It is a perfect square, so that it just reduces to a 12. See, so kind of scroll down a little bit. Now my work looks like this. x equals negative 8 plus and minus, that now is a 12, over 2. So here's the bad news. Because this simplifies to rational answers, you actually need to give me your two different answers. So the first answer is x equals negative 8 plus 12 divided by 2. And then the other answer is going to be negative 8 minus 12 divided by 2. So if you're on your calculator, that's fine. Just make sure you use parentheses like this. But both of these come out to nice, easy answers. So let's see. 4 divided by 2 is a 2. And then, uh, oh boy, negative 20 divided by 2 is a negative 10. So if you get rational answers, rational solutions, you need to break them down all the way to the pretty answers. Okay? There will be one on your test like that. So, moving along to the next quadratic formula question. Maybe. There we go. Uh, number 11 is a good one for us to look at. And we have quadratic formula again, which will be given to you. And then our coefficients is what we should identify first. So the a value here is a 3, the quadratic coefficient. And then the linear coefficient is 8. And then your constant is a 1. All right. Quadratic formula starts off with opposite of b, so negative 8, plus or minus, big square root symbol, and then b squared, oh man, I don't know why the, well, the b values are 8 in the last two questions, all right, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a, so, ooh, this isn't looking good, all right, so we're going to, Take out our calculator or use our mental math skills to calculate just the discriminant, just this part. So I'm going to steal all this space over here. I don't care. Right. So my work ends up being negative 8 plus and minus the square root of, let's see, that is a 64. This time we're minus 12. Uh, so what is that, 52? Oh, that is like the worst news possible because 52 breaks down. So you got to think about your perfect squares list. You know, 4, 9, 16, 25, so on and so on. And you decide which of those divides into 52 as a factor. And 52 can be broken down into 4 times 13. So the square root of 4 part, we're going to call a 2. So this quadratic equation so far is negative 8, or the solutions, excuse me, are negative 8 plus and minus 2 square root of 13 all of it over 6. 
and then we're still not done. <laughs> because when you look at all of these coefficients, when you look at the negative 8, and you look at the 2, and you look at the 6, now you need to reduce. All of those can be divided by a factor of 2. So your solutions are, and this is the last step, I promise, negative 4 plus and minus. You can put a 1 here if you want, but it's just this 1 times the square root of 13 over 3. That is the solution set that we'd be looking for. Whew, that's about as tricky as it gets on the, as far as the, what I could possibly ask you for a test, guys. So if you can get through all that, that's awesome. All right, let me sneak down the page a little bit. Ah, properties of exponent is back. Okay, so this is a really important skill for later on in the course, like next semester, but it's also on your post-test. So we want to make sure that um, we're all still squared away on properties of exponents. So you will get a new score for this concept. So if you were awesome at it before, you need to make sure you're still awesome. And some things to watch out for are coefficients. So like, for instance, on number 13, this fourth power is going to have to be distributed to everybody. So it is up to you how you approach this question. A lot of you just like to go ahead and distribute the fourth power like to everybody and then start reducing. So this becomes 2 to the fourth, and then it becomes u to the, remember, power to power, you multiply them. So u to the negative twelfth, and then times v to the negative fourth. Also, everything in your denominator gets these as well. So this becomes u to the twelfth, times v to the negative fourth. All right, so as far as what's going on next, you look at your coefficients as separate problems, you look at your u's as separate problems, and you look at the v's as separate problems. The coefficient, um, really nothing happens to the coefficient other than you can simplify it. So 2 to the fourth power is 16. If you left it as 2 to the fourth power, technically that's fine. Um, but let's talk about the u to the negative 12th over u to the negative 24th. You're supposed to subtract these numbers in that order. So negative 12 minus 12 is u to the negative 24th. Notice I put that in the numerator for now. And then same thing here, you're going to subtract um, negative 4 minus negative 4 minus a negative 4 actually ends up being a 0. So here's what I notice. This has a negative exponent which means it needs to move to the other side. And then anything to the zero power is just equal to one. So we don't have to worry about that term at all. So this becomes a 16 over u to the 24th power. I don't think that was the most efficient or simplest way to get that question right. Um, also helps if you can read your answers, Abruzzo. Let's try that again. So I'm okay with that answer leaving just like that. I do wanna go ahead and work through um, number 14 with you. Oh, my nose is not stopped. <laughs> okay, 14, I'm a little worried about the coefficient itself. So if you were to like take everything to the third power, you'd have 2 to the third times b to the twelfth over 4 to the third times a to the ninth times b to the sixth. All right, so now when you look at coefficients, get in the habit of reducing them, and oftentimes you guys use your calculator, which is fine. Type this in, and then just bring it back to a fraction. So type it in and hit math, enter, enter. And when you do that, <clears throat> let's see, that becomes 8, I don't have a calculator, so <laughs> 8 over 64 is that one, one eighth. I believe. Yeah. All right, so then... The a to the ninth is not going to go anywhere. There's no other a's, and it's positive, so I'm just going to leave a to the ninth down in the denominator. But let's look at the b's. Right here, we have b to the twelfth over b to the sixth. We're supposed to subtract those. Twelve minus six, better known as b to the sixth. And I think this is a great answer. You don't need the one, obviously. You could just write b to the sixth. Uh, but I like that answer. All right. Let's see if you remember what to do with negative exponents. So... Uh, the 2 and the 4 are your coefficients. We'll talk about those in a second, but they don't have negative exponents on them, so we'll come back to that. Now, <clears throat> you can move. That's what a lot of you like to do with these. So you like to move these around because negative exponents are on the wrong side. So maybe you change this to x to the 3rd over x to the 4th. You don't have to do it that way. And then right now, y to the 4th over y squared, we could just leave it. 
but we're, we're surely not done. This is not reduced. So we need to reduce the fraction by hitting math, enter, enter. So that's a one half. And then if you used your subtraction rule, this becomes x to the negative one, because we will move to the bottom in a minute. And then if you use your subtraction rule here, this becomes y squared. And again, we're not quite done because we had that negative exponent. So this guy is going to move. And you end up with y squared over 2 times x or x to the first. Uh, trust your instincts. And we know what makes those frustrating to kids is the fact that there's not just like one right way to get the right answer. In fact, some of you did really awesome on that bonus question where on the last time we tested this where you um, were able to manipulate it and get a bunch of different <coughs> um, ways to get the right answer. By the way, if you earned a bonus on that last test, I'm not going to take the bonus away from you. I'll go back and gift it to you on this one as well. I don't think I put an extra credit question. Sorry about that. All right, so here, one-half power. Well, everybody's going to get the one-half power, huh? So 49 to the one-half power, x to the third power, over 25 to the one-half power, and then 8 to the one-half power would be y to the fourth. All right, so what I need you to remember, though, is what does the one-half power mean? Well, 49 to the one-half power is the same thing as saying the square root of 49. So that means the 49 to the one-half power becomes a 7, 25 to the 1 half power becomes a 5. And then x to the 3rd over y to the 4th are kind of good where they are. So that's not really a tricky question. You just have to remember that the 1 half power is the same thing as a square root. And then once you remember that, then you're good. All right. I feel like I'm skipping questions. I did these slides kind of goofy. All right. There we go. So we're revisiting the concept of domain and range. What I'm going to ask you guys to do is use your knowledge of the function plus knowledge of how to use the calculator. And you're going to really carefully graph this for me and then give me domain and range. So like for instance here, I don't have calculator, so I'm just going to like use my knowledge. We have a parabola who has a vertex at, let's see, 2, negative 1. So like right here. And then maybe I'd come up with a table on my calculator on the test, you know, one of these things. Ugh, sorry. <laughs> I sound really goofy, I know. So, if I were to plug in a 1, let's see, 1, so negative 2. Both of these come out to negative 2. Okay, so we end up with a parabola, who happens to be opening upside down. Whew. So, when we talk about domain, remember domain is, you know, left to right. So the domain of this guy, because of the arrows, it goes forever to the left and forever to the right. So think of it this way. Negative infinity and positive infinity live over here. All right, the range, however. The range measures from low to high. So this guy's range starts at negative infinity, and then it's going to stop up here at one, uh, negative 1, excuse me. So we've got to make sure we use a bracket on that negative 1. We have to really be careful about domain and range. we got to get real good at those and be accurate every single time. There is another question where if you're going to use your calculator, remember that the absolute value bars you can find on your calculator by going to math, um, and then over to where it says NUM, and then number 1 is where you'll see ABS. So if you need to use your calculator for this, that's totally fine. However, I think you guys could come up with a table, or at least a vertex. Um, and just remember, these are absolute value graphs. So negative 2 comma 4 is the vertex. And then you could, you know, of course, come up with other ordered pairs. That would totally work. You could also remember that because the absolute value bar has a linear shape on the branches, the slope is down 2 over 1 in both directions. Either way. Oh, that's ugly. <laughs> you were supposed to get a V-shaped graph. Um, <laughs> excuse me. So your domain, anything with these double-sided arrows, the domain goes forever, negative infinity to infinity. But let's talk about the range. So it goes down forever, so it starts off at negative infinity, but then it stops up here at 4 with a bracket. So these are very common style functions that I'm going to ask you to come up with domain and range on. 
and we got to be real good at it. Not just for this test or the post test, but just for algebra in general. All right, we're going to see a return of completing the square where I have you come up with the blank and then I have you factor it. So remember, the blank is your middle term, which we call B, cut in half, and then it's squared. And then to factor it, the pattern you use for factoring is X and then whatever half of your B term was, that quantity being squared. So for this guy, if you cut 16 in half and then you squared it, that would be a 64. And then to factor this, that would factor, oops, not x this time, but y, and then half of 16 would be plus 8 quantity squared. So this is the lead-up question to how we actually take this and solve by completing the square. So let's take a look at number 27. Um, we start by creating a blank so that way we can complete the square but then we take this 50 and we say get out of here you're in my way <clears throat> so put 50 over here but then we got to remember to balance everything out right it's an equation so half of this squared would be a 16 and then now we're going to use our factoring pattern the reason you put a 16 here is because now this trinomial factors into m plus 4 quantity squared. Add that over here, 50 plus 16 is 66. So, last, well not last step, but second to last step, we're square rooting both sides. This becomes n plus 4 equals, don't forget to put a plus or minus in front of the solutions. Good news, 66 does not break down, so you're just going to leave it as 66. And then your final step would be to subtract the 4 over. So your solutions are negative 4 plus and minus the square root of 66. There we go. Oh, let's see here. Sorry, let's see if there's anything coming up where we need to revisit it. Yeah, probably this. All right, modified completed square to write vertex form. So just a quick reminder for you guys, the vertex form I'm looking for looks like this. We're not going to have any of the tricky ones where you got to factor out anything. So you're only allowed to work on the left, uh, the right-hand side. Don't touch the left-hand side. And remember, you're going to get done in two steps, so don't get too excited. <laughs> All right, so you're going to start with the x squared and the minus 8x, and then you're going to put a plus blank. Now, this 18, I can't move it to the other side, so I'm just going to kind of shovel it off to the other side. But this is where it gets weird, where you added a blank right here. Because you're on the same side, you're going to also subtract that blank to keep it balanced. So the blank is found the same way. You take the negative 8, you cut it in half, and you square it. So that's a 16. But this blank is a minus 16. <clears throat> Here's why we did that. Because now this trinomial we could factor into uh, x, and then minus 4. And then right here, you can just add those together. So that's a plus 2. There is vertex form. So your vertex is located at 4, 2. And then, guys, you, these are like the easiest questions to know if you got them right on your test because you have a graphing calculator. So if you just graph the original problem up here, you should see a vertex at 4, 2. And if you don't see that, then you messed up. And maybe you can fix your mistake before you just get the whole section wrong. All right, so it's more of that. Um, I think that's the end of our review, guys. So we've got a few new scores, some old scores coming you know, repeating, and then some really old scores coming back, trying to get us ready for our post-test. Good luck, everybody, and remember, it's almost December, so i got to get it going. Hey, good news, my nose stopped bleeding.